Hello students of Dynamics, this is Dr. Dan Baker and today's lecture is going to focus on our last topic in impulse momentum. Also turns out to be our last topic that we'll cover in the first half of Dynamics. Basically the last purely particle topic we'll cover which is angular impulse and momentum. This is actually a great topic to finish off particles with because it's a rotational topic. Okay, and that's going to be the, one of the biggest changes switching from particles into rigid bodies from the first half of dynamics into the second half of dynamics is transitioning into not just worrying about translation, but also having to factor in rotation. Okay, so I think one of the classic examples to think about um, rotation and impulse momentum in general would be a merry-go-round. Okay, so let's add an axis system here. So this uh, vertical axis is basically going up through the middle of that merry-go-round. Let's call that Z. Let's put our Y axis here going also in the plane of the page um, out to the right. And let's call our X axis. We'll draw it down this direction here, basically coming out of the page toward you. Okay, or you can really think about these oriented to this merry-go-round. And so it should be obvious, hopefully, that the angular velocity of this merry-go-round is going to be around one of these three axes. See if you can pick out that axis, x, y, or z. So let's assume we have a theta dot, which is also the same thing as our omega, angular velocity around that z-axis, right? And if you put your thumb on the positive z-axis and wrap your fingertips around, that gives you the overall rotational motion um, from that rotational vector. And so if we imagine that there's a person, I'll just draw this person as a box. Let's see what did. Okay, so here is our box person and they are sitting on this merry-go-round. Not only do they have an angular velocity, they also have a linear velocity, right? We know that linear velocity is always tangential to the path. And so if you think about the path of this box, let's see here, we'll go with path in blue, go dotted line. It's just gonna be basically around and around and around that merry-go-round. Right, so this velocity, linear velocity v vector is perpendicular. Now we could also draw an r vector to locate where is this person, where is this box. Okay, so there's r and there's v and my omega. Okay, so to build up some of the pieces that we need. First of all, we need to understand that the linear velocity v and the angular velocity omega are related by a cross product with that position vector r, okay? So the position vector goes from the axes of rotation. So I'll say where r is as a vector is defined as our position vector from an axis of rotation to our particle or to our point. Um, we'll actually do a lot of V equals omega cross R as we get into rigid bodies as well. And we could also say here that my omega, I'll go ahead and be real explicit here, is my angular velocity. Right, this is rotational. While v is our linear velocity. So of course, while they're related, they're not the same, okay? Another way of talking about this is that if we move this box in closer to the center of rotation, it's actually gonna have less and less linear velocity, clear to the point that right here at the origin, okay, so call that point O, 
we can actually say that VO is equal to zero as my R vector, right, if it goes from the axis of rotation to the location of the particle, it's also equal to zero, right? So basically, if you have no distance away from the axis of rotation, you have no linear velocity. But let me go ahead and highlight all the areas that have exactly the same angular velocity. Every single point on that rotating body has exactly the same angular velocity. Okay, so all points have the same omega. Okay, so you can also say that the angular velocity is a body property where the linear velocity is the property of a point, right, of a location. All right, so that should get us oriented on rotation. Now, coming back to momentum, right, because we are in this impulse momentum chapter, we could also quantify, if we wanted to, the momentum of this box, right? So if I want to find the momentum, turns out, and this would be the linear momentum, the topic we've already covered, and that would simply be the product of m times the velocity vector, right? We covered that in the previous section, so not a big surprise. So we also can have what's called an angular momentum. And so just like for our um, So all we're going to do to get our angular momentum is basically take r cross all of our linear momentum terms. Okay? So this will be my angular momentum equation. Same exact structure. I'm going to put a summation out front if we have multiple particles. So instead of just m times v, we now have r cross m times v vector. We're going to add to that what we call our angular impulse. Okay, again, if we have multiple forces or multiple couples in this case, because we are going to sum our moments. In this case, always or this moment always needs to be summed around your axes of rotation. And so this is going to be sum of moments at 0.0 dt, right? Again, an impulse, in this case, angular impulse is going to be a moment times time. And this is equal to the sum of my r cross mv2, where both v is a vector and r is a vector. Okay, so to put some definitions with these, of course, this is our um, initial angular momentum. This is our final angular momentum. And this in the middle is our angular impulse. So just like the linear form of this equation, initial and final are just snapshots of the velocity. And everything in the middle here, so you can think this is pre, this is post, and this is during. So fundamentally, pre plus during equals post. So you need to quantify the entire moment happening on that body. Now, because again, this is a vector equation, you could think that on the predominantly two-dimensional problems that we're going to be evaluating, we're really just going to be worried about not only momentum around the z-axis, but also impulse around the z-axis, right? Because in the vector equation, we want to match up our momentum direction in addition to our impulse direction. So let's look at applying this equation to an example problem. 
So here is an example problem. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to, to go ahead and write out the problem. But fundamentally, we have a mass. This mass is defined by an 80 pounds, right? All pounds are pound force. A crate, which is basically moving around a frictionless assembly line. And so on this assembly line, we're looking down at the top view here. It's going to start over here at one. It's going to finish over here at two. So initially, the crate has a velocity of 0.5 feet per second. Just after 0.1, this arm is going to start contracting, pulling in from two feet radius down to one foot radius as it gets over to two. And the rate at which it's contracting, V sub R, is equal to 0.4 feet per second. Okay, so you could think maybe this is a hydraulic arm, it's pulling in, and of course, while it's pulling in, this um, crate is changing its radius, it's also changing its direction. We want to know what is the velocity in R theta components at two, we want to know how much work that the arm does, and we also want to know how long does the crate take to get from one to two. Okay, so three different questions. This is still a particle kinetics problem. Being a particle connects problem, we need to draw a free body diagram. I'll go ahead and draw an isometric little box here. Okay, so there is my box. Let's get my axes rolling. So coming up out of the surface that's sliding on, we're gonna call that the Z axis. The arm, we're going to assume, is kind of coming in from the back face, and so the R axis will come kind of out to the right. And then theta is in the direction. Let's go ahead and assume, because we do need a theta axis. So let's assume that the position of this arm is measured. We'll pick it from over here. Okay, so either to here or basically then wrapping around to here, that this would be our theta. So that then defines our theta axes coming out of the back face of the box in that direction. All right, so there's our axis system adding our forces. We have a weight force, 80 pounds. We have a normal force coming up off that frictionless assembly line. We're also gonna have a force of this arm, right? So F arm pulling in on that box. We know we need that force whether the arm contracted in length or not. Basically, we need a normal type force to pull this, um, keeping it in a curve. And if we then label our kinetic terms, we have that our V sub R, our radial velocity is gonna negative R direction, getting shorter. And then we additionally have a v theta we have a transverse velocity in the theta direction now the full velocity is actually going to be a, comp, a combination of both of those um, you know so we actually found the tangential velocity it's going to be between that v theta and the vr okay so there is our free body diagram combined with our kinetics diagram identifying all the different motion all right so now let's look at parts A, B, and C. So this is for part A, we're gonna use angular momentum. So we have some, now I'm not gonna put the sums out front because we just have the one crate, okay? So we're really gonna have R cross MV1 plus my impulse, the integral of the sum, of my moments, about 0 0.0 dt is equal to r cross mv2. All right, so one thing to take a look at is do we have any angular impulse? Take a look at the forces in our system. In what direction do you think would cause a moment around the origin? Turns out the direction we'd need a force in is theta. But we don't have any forces in the theta. All the forces are either in the R or the Z. So it turns out in this problem, we have no additional 
forces or couples that are changing the momentum in the direction of rotation. Okay, so we're left with basically a conservation of angular momentum. And let me modify this. I said angular momentum. This is angular momentum plus impulse. Okay, so R cross MV, we have an initial radius of 2. Our mass is going to be that 80 pound force divided by gravitational constant in US customary units, 32.2. And our velocity coming in was 0 0.5, right? That was the full velocity right before the arm started contracting. And so this is going to be equal to a final radius of one foot, that times the same mass, 80 divided by 32.2, and our velocity. Now, do you think this will be the full velocity? Do you think this might be the radial velocity or possibly the transverse theta velocity? Take a look and think. What direction is this velocity that we're talking about created by a cross product of r, right, r crossed into this, what velocity are we talking about? Turns out that this will be the velocity just of theta, right, because theta is perpendicular to r, and our cross product finds the amount of one vector perpendicular to another. Okay, so we can easily then solve from this. Now, let me mention that this is a vector equation. Um, I listed both of these as positive values. And the reason for that, if I, if I look at these velocities here and I look at the r vectors, I'm going to add my r vector. So here's my r1. Here is my r2. No, I, didn't, I didn't quite get things to scale, but that's all right. So if I cross this r into this v, my thumb comes out of the page. And so this is positive from the right-hand rule. Same thing at position 2, positive from the right-hand rule. Okay, So just a note that you do need to pay attention to those directions. And we find out that v theta is equal to a magnitude of 1 foot per second. And so if we want the total velocity as a vector, we're going to go with r comma theta. The r is negative 0 0.4, right? That's that constant value that the arm is contracting. And then we have the theta as 1. So there's our answer to part A. Now, noting that there's quite a bit going on in this example, but I thought it's a good one to kind of push the different limits, the different understanding of what is angular impulse and momentum. All right, the next problem says work. There's a big clue to not use impulse momentum. Let's just think about work. Okay, so our, our um, work energy equation, I'm gonna write the version without springs because there's no springs here. So this is part B, work energy. And so we have one half mv1 squared plus mgh1 plus my external work from 1 to 2 uh, is equal to 1 half mv2 squared plus mgh2. Okay, now everything in this problem is at the same elevation. So it also turns out that our heights, we put our datum at that same elevation, go away. And we're left with just kinetic energy and external work. And so we find out that... Uh, we have one half the mass 80 times, or excuse me, 80 divided by 32.2. Now it's really just the difference in those velocities, right? So this velocity here, if we use the Pythagorean theorem, we find out that V is equal to 1.077. That's in feet per second. This is also feet per second, the units on this guy. And so with that velocity, we're going to plug that in here, right? Because velocity in a work energy is always total velocity. It doesn't care if it's VR, V theta. It's the total magnitude. So 1.077 squared minus the initial 0 0.5 squared. And we end up, now this problem didn't ask us to solve for like the, I could have said average force, but then we'd need the distance over which it traveled. Just, it went for work. Okay, so this is the work term. 
So W prime from one to two is numerically equal to um, 1.13 units of work are always going to be in distance times force. So foot pounds is a work term. Okay, so that's the amount of work happening on that crate. And the last part, part C, while it might look like the most challenging, is actually the easiest part. And we want to find delta T, the amount of time. Now, there's two approaches to this. We could try to find the change in the velocity, the total, the total change in that velocity from one to two. That'd be a whole bunch of effort trying to figure out and basically integrate over that and figure out what the delta T is going to be in order to have the particle arrive at two with its known values. But an easier way is that we know that this arm is moving at a constant radial velocity. So we know that, plus we know how far it contracts. Okay, so can't we take an easier approach here and say, well, if I'm looking for time and I have a distance and a velocity, I know that delta T is equal to delta R over my velocity. Now this isn't the full velocity because we're just talking about the radial velocity, V sub R. Okay, so I have a change two minus one feet in the top. I have a radial velocity in the bottom, 0 0.4 feet per second. And so we end up with a value of 2.5 seconds. All right, so three unique parts on this problem. The first dealing specifically with impulse and momentum in an angular type motion. Now this problem did have the complexity of a VR versus V theta, really testing out do you understand um, what those velocity components even mean and when do you need one of them versus when do you need the other. We ended up using V theta up here, so basically solving for V theta, because it is only the V theta, which is perpendicular to R, right? And that's what a cross product gives us. Um, I guess we could have in that context have written the velocity out as components and taken the cross product. Um, this is just a little bit easier approach to say, well, I know my cross product is only gonna give me a velocity perpendicular to that R. We then use work energy. Now work energy uses the full velocity now, it uses the full velocity because the energy term doesn't care what direction velocities are going in. And then on the last problem, we end up using VR. And we use VR basically to find our change in time because we had a change in the arm length at a constant velocity and back solved for that. So hopefully that was a useful example for you to get to think about not only angular impulse momentum, but also the components of velocities and how your knowledge of the direction of the velocity components then can influence which is the correct component to use for various parts of the computation. Hope you're having a great day.